Hello everyone, it's uh, Steven Weigel here. As someone who's been getting into 31 tone equal temperament more lately, I decided to notate the key signatures out for I all of the diatonic scales because 31 can do those. It has diatonic scales where the whole step is 5 degrees and the half step is 3. So Dorico software enables me to do this pretty easily with a custom key signatures tool. See how many key signatures I have. These are all the, the 31 EDO key signatures I could ever want, and they work for a lot of other things too. So if you're a microtonalist, I can't recommend this software enough. So you can make your own tonality system that's part of an EDO, and if you don't want to use an EDO, you can have an absolutely giant one and specify the numbers so that no one can tell the difference orally, so that's really helpful. And then you can make custom key signatures over here. So like, you know, I can just use the accidentals that I have chosen for my tonality system and I can just add them and I can make them go up and down the octave wherever I want uh, as long as they're on the staff. So it lets you do that for seven notes. So that's very helpful. Notation in playback is also all native. So that makes it really easy too. So in this video, I'll be using quarter tone accidentals of which there are four. There are two extra for the sharps right here and then there's two extra for the flats right here extra from what you would have in 12 tone equal temperament and these intermediate symbols go in between the sharps and flats to create a continuum of values uh so instead of calling them quarter sharp uh three quarter sharp and quarter flat three quarters flat i'm going to call them semi sharps and sesqui sharps so that they can be so that it's not numerically implied that quarter tone tuning is being used. So starting from the natural, I can go natural, up to semi-sharp, up to sharp, up to sesquisharp. And then starting from the natural and going down, I can go natural, semi-flat, flat, sesquiflat, double flat. And I could keep going and have weird ones, and I do have those for the sharps. I could add those for the flat ones, but I haven't actually needed them at all for the key signatures, but you do use the sharp ones uh, if you want to notate all of them in a systematic way like I did. So, I am in 31 tone equal temperament here, but the uh, key signatures that I'm showing you will work in any tuning where you're notating things diatonically the same way as 12th tone equal temperament. So 17, 19, 24, 31. And there are probably some others that it'll work with that I haven't pointed out. Although I don't think people use semi and sesqui sharps and flats for 19 very much because it's not really very helpful. But it is helpful for 17, 24, and 31. Anyway, let's get started. So the issue I ran into was how to notate diatonic key signatures with semi-sharps and semi-flats together, to which I'd like to propose a tentative methodology. Uh, you see, with key signatures that extend from the original chain of naturals, like see here, C, G, D, A, E, B, F-sharp, C-sharp, all the ones you know from school, uh... The original chain of naturals used in 12 tone equal temperament. One can create the extended letters key signatures by simply continuing the cycle with double sharps or double flats. So here, let's... so like, you know, we've gotten a C sharp major, and then we can go to G sharp major, and you see how it has that F double sharp there. That is just like, you know, the F sharp of G major, where we have just taken all of the notes up a sharp. So this makes sense from a transpositional perspective. And then you know we have D sharp major, A sharp major, E sharp major, and you can see that the double sharp places look like our other key signatures, and then there are just sharps for all of the other notes. And then of course we have B sharp major, F double sharp major, instead of like the F sharp major we would have over here, right? And then we have C double sharp major, which is just all double sharps. So then of course we can do this going in the flatty direction too. If I start with C, and then I have F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat, and then a fifth below C flat is F flat. So F flat gets a B double flat, since you know you've got to go from A flat to B flat, and that has to be 
a minor second. So A flat to B flat is that. And of course this of course looks like F major just transposed down. Everything is a flat except that B flat gets transposed even more. So it's, you know, F flat major. And then we have just the double flat majors. B double flat major, E double flat major, A double flat major, uh, D double flat major, G double flat major, and... Oh, I guess I didn't need C double flat major uh, to fill in everything. But you could have that if you wanted. I actually didn't make it. Um, but you could have C double flat major too. So, semi-sharps and semi-flats are a little bit different. They occupy their own enharmonic chain of notes in any diatonic system in which they are used. In other words, you can't reach a semi-sharp or semi-flat note from the chain of natural notes if you are spelling it. So for example, um, like, you know, here's like G-flat, right? G-flat goes to C-flat, that's up a perfect fourth. C-flat goes up to F-flat, that's up another perfect fourth. What I'm saying is you will never correctly spell a semi-sharp or semi-flat note from that original chain of naturals, sharps, flats, and double sharps and double flats. The semis and sesquis are on an entirely different chain that's enharmonic with your other chains so that you can add additional notes and sort of describe additional intervals how you would like. So if you want to see the enharmonics for those, I recommend checking out the wiki pages for 17 and 24, and then I have some links to 31 EDO sources in the description. So, when we use semi-sharps and flats, a new key signature situation occurs. I'm just gonna, like, go back to G or something. Uh, we get some diatonic scales that contain semi-sharps and flats at the same time in order to denote the diatonic scale. Note that this still isn't true for the sesqui flats and sharps, they behave like the double sharps and flats, where the key signatures either contain all sharps or all flats. So they can be in the same spots they always were. Like, for example, here's the, the sesqui sharps, like G, ses, um, a G semi sharp major, um, you know, D semi sharp major. And of course, the semi sharps start this off, but you can see that the sharps are just in the same place, so we don't have any new issues. And then the same is true with the sesqui flats. Like if I wanted to start with, uh, you know, F semi flat major, and then B sesqui flat major. Now you see we've gone from semi flat to sesqui flat there. Analogously, it's like F going to B flat, but it's been lower to semi flat. Uh, B sesqui flat major goes to E sesqui flat, to A sesqui flat, to D sesqui flat, to G sesqui flat, and I didn't need C sesqui flat, just like I didn't need C double flat earlier, so I didn't make that, but, you know, you would have another sesqui flat there. So, let's go ahead and start with our problem by demonstrating with C semi sharp major. Uh, so, I'm gonna go up here and get that. So, here's, okay, C semi sharp major makes sense, right? And so does C semi flat major. That would just be all semi flats, and that would just be all semi sharps. It's a lot like what we do with C sharp and C flat, uh, or anything with C, where it's just everything is just transposed. So, in twelve ten equal temperament, our whole and half steps are two chromatic degrees and one chromatic degree, respectively. So, in quarter tone tuning, we could just double that to four and two. So, let's try creating F semi sharp major. So, I'm going to spell that out for you. You can see that there's F sharp or F semi sharp and G semi sharp, A semi sharp, B half flat. That's because our half step has to skip A sharp slash B flat. So there's A half sharp. We go up one to A sharp, right? Because semi sharp, sharp, uh, and then sesqui sharp. But we want to spell it as B flat. So notice that this is exactly like F major transposed up a semi sharp, or alternatively, F sharp major transposed down a semi sharp. We can also notice this with the next keys along the chain as well. So, uh, you know, B semi flat, E semi flat, etc. So going back to F semi sharp major. 
right here. Now we're going back to key signatures. We can see that those two opposite perspectives are different ways to write the key signature. So if we write it as we would F sharp major, starting with F and ascending by fifths, the key signature looks like this, right? Because like all of the accidentals are in the same place that they were if we were using sharps. Let's see if I can find it. So if we were writing it from F major's perspective, though, like we were writing F major, we would actually write it like this, right? Uh, because we start with B and ascend by fourths instead, just like we do in flats. See, here's like B, E, A, and they're all in the same spots that the flats were. So this is kind of what our problem is. And I can show you what some of the other ones look like if we do this too. Like here's a uh, B semi-flat major, like from the sharps perspective. So it's written like it would be with B major and two extra notes. And then here it is from the flats perspective. So we sort of have two different ways to write that. And then here the same is true for like E semi flat major. Uh, from the sharpie perspective, we start with F. And then from the flatty perspective, we start with B and keep going from there. So that is kind of the problem we have here is we have a trade off between familiarities. It's like if I write it, if I write E semi flat major like I would E major, now the key signature reminds me of E major, but it doesn't really remind me of E flat major. And then, you know, if I switch to the other one and I'd sort of pick it from the flats perspective. Now it's kind of looking like E flat major, but it doesn't really look like E major. So this is sort of the problem that I wanted to fix. In essence, the problem with writing this key signature is that we have to pick a direction for the letters, either writing it as we would proceed with sharps or with flats. So to retain familiarity, the approach that I propose incorporates both directions so that it's easy to interpret it from either direction. So here's my method. We decide arbitrarily to write semi-sharps first in the order that they would occur in a standard key signature, and then the semi-flats also in the order that they would occur in the key signature, so that we have the familiarity of seeing both of the key signatures we know. So, you know, for F um, semi-sharp major, this just looks like it's being written like it would be in F sharp major. But then as we keep going up, we see that this method sort of starts to make sense. So here's B semi flat major. And you can see that since we have the sharps here, and then just the flats as you would write them starting from B, then it looks like it could be either like B major, right, with the five sharps, or like B flat major with the two flats. And then the same is true here. Maybe you could switch it and put the flats on the left if you wanted instead of the right, but I don't really care. Um, I mean, I kind of like the flats on the right better, I think, uh, and the sharps on the left. So, like, here's, you know, E semi-flat major. It looks like E major, but also, uh, like, E flat major here. And then here's, uh, you know, A semi-flat major. This looks like A. This looks like A flat. D semi-flat major. This looks like D. This looks like D flat. G semi flat major. This looks like G, and this looks like G flat. Really looks a lot more like G flat. And then, of course, we get to C half flat major. So, those are the only key signatures in the semi sharp and semi flat world that we have to deal with that in is F semi sharp, B semi flat, E semi flat, A semi flat, D semi flat, and G semi flat. I can say from personal experience that this is easier to immediately grasp than picking a direction for the sharps or flats and then writing all of them as if they were sharps or all of them as if they were flats. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully this method makes more sense and is useful. Uh, I didn't really know what to compare it to. But in the description, I've also got a PDF of 31 equal tempered major scales that I made, as well as all of the key signatures that I made if you want a quick cheat. And of course, those key signatures work in other tunings where you're notating such things uh, in a diatonic consistent manner, namely 17, uh, 19, 24, and 31, and probably some others that I'm going to miss that people can point out. So uh, check out the links for other sources also. I'll see you in the next video, and subscribe if you're interested in music theory, ear training, and composition. Thanks!